Uh, he told me that about midway through his presentation, he is going to offer the opportunity for everyone to go and provide their questions if they have any. So if you'd like to please use the question and answer function, um, we encourage you to do so. As it says on here, participation is encouraged. And I will be muting all viewers during the presentation so as to not interrupt the flow. So today on the phone call, you know, we have myself. We also have Rick Waller. He's on a professional services team. We also have Todd Prokop. He is our account manager. We also have Susan Lewis. She is our marketing coordinator. You know, and the one question you might be asking yourself is why critical design associates? Why, why should we be presenting this today? Well, first off, you know, we are a team of Avanti certified experts. In fact, at Interchange in Nashville, Tennessee this year, just a couple months ago, we were uh, awarded 2018 New Partner of the Year. And I don't want that to be misleading. We've actually been working with Avanti products for a number of years, especially the AppSense product. Um, we work quite heavily with User Workspace Manager, the Endpoint Management Security Suite, uh, the ISM uh, application, the Help Desk application, and of course, uh, Avanti Extraction. In addition to that, we are a team of Microsoft certified professionals. So it made sense for us to marry these two technologies together and provide a webinar. Um, we work heavily with Microsoft SDCM. We have a whole team that works with that, that, that system uh, on a regular basis. A little bit about critical design. We were founded in 2001 and we had a focus on project consulting, managed services and staffing. Um, our office location is located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and we service the eastern side of the United States. I actually would say we, we actually service the entire globe, even the western side of the United States, but most of our team is located on the eastern side of the United States with our headquarters in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. You know, we provide solutions for Fortune 1000 companies. It's where we excel. Um, not to say that we don't work with smaller businesses, you know, that might have a thousand seats or less. So we definitely do. But where we excel is in providing solutions for Fortune 1000 companies. And today, our core services are still consulting, managed services, and staffing. The verticals that we service are financial, healthcare, power, which is energy, oil, and gas, uh, the manufacturing sector, legal, education, and retail. And the practice areas that we focus on today in 2019 are application delivery and packaging, endpoint management, cybersecurity, regulatory compliance, and IT service management, and IT asset management. And over the left, left here, you'll see we have a couple bullet points. You know, we're a service-based organization. I bring that up because there's groups similar to ours that will have 25 people on staff, 20 salespeople, five engineers. With Critical Design Associates, it's the exact opposite. Uh, we have 20 engineers and five support people. And that is something that our clients really like about us because we are so focused on the professional services end. You know, and we invest heavily in our people, that which leads me to our next slide, which are the pillars of success for Critical Design Associates. And it really starts with the people. Um, the people within our organization are by far our most valuable asset. We're constantly training, cross-training, doing webinars, going to conferences, going to meetup groups. Why? So we can deliver the best processes to our, our customers to help them solve the business challenges that they need to solve. And those, that process is married with the software platform to help them accomplish their needs. So these three areas are a symbiotic relationship, which are the pillars of success for our company. In addition to that, we follow a proven methodology, which starts out with a full project analysis. We then design the solution. We then build the solution. We do thorough testing, and then we deploy to a live environment. And we use this for nearly every project that we encounter. And this is a laundry list of the solutions that would fall under the practice areas that we focus on. I'm not going to read these off at right now, but we will provide a recorded version of this webinar afterwards if, if anybody has any questions or would like to deep dive on this. 
And I should also men mention our partners. You know, we provide value added services and resell for the partners listed on this page. So this is, this is not just us. We work with a number of organizations to, to bring successful solutions to our, to our customers. But with that said, oh, I'd like to get started. I'm proud to introduce Rick Waller. He's gonna be our, our presenter for today. Rick, I'm gonna turn the share over to you. And uh, thank you everybody, everybody very much for listening. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, like uh, like uh, Brian was saying there, my name is Rick Waller uh, uh, with uh, CDA as a senior consultant on the professional services team. And I've uh, been uh, working here uh, for 2019, and then prior to that, I was with Avanti uh, for several years uh, through a lot of the different mergers and acquisitions that they had. Uh, so I've been kind of in and out of, uh, of all the different products, one of which being the extraction product uh, that we're going to talk about today. Uh, like I said, uh, extraction for me has been uh, prevalent uh, for about two years, uh, and then I've been uh, in and out of uh, SCCM for about four years as a, you know, uh, from a, you know dealing with the back end uh, piece of things, and then uh, you know an overall customer of uh, Avanti's uh, products for about 12 years, going back into into my prior uh, life before professional services. So uh, what is Extraction? Extraction uh, used to be a, a company that was standalone. Uh, they provided uh, a reporting interface with uh, connectors that build in, uh, you know, easy to use uh, reporting functionality. Uh, and uh, it was later acquired by Landesk. Uh, they brought it into their fold and uh, started uh, getting it to uh, work with uh, the Avanti products in addition to the third party connectors. Uh, that they've got uh, and have continued to build on. And then uh, when Heat Software and uh, Landesk merged uh, last year, uh, it uh, became uh, Extraction or Avanti Extraction uh, for the specific name there. Uh, looking at uh, you know extraction as a whole, the the challenges that it's trying to meet, uh, reporting itself, you know, can be a very broad term. You know, you've got uh, real-time dashboards. Uh, actual historical or trending reports, uh, being able to do some uh, data interaction through analysis and uh, business intelligence. And, uh, and then you also have the components uh, for you know, a lot of the IT team they, where their executive sponsors uh, come to them and want to know, uh, you know impacts of outages or uh, you know, uh, how things are, are doing in a return on investment uh, for things that they've bought. So the uh, connectors allow for that, uh, you know, that functionality because you're able to get in and, and look at those, uh, those grains of data by pulling the data right from the databases that those products are using uh, today. And then not only that, uh, you also have the ability to uh, look at, um, you know, doing notifications and alerting, uh, whether it be through email or, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, various uh, other uh, options in the product itself. And then, of course, uh, you know, usually, uh, you know, a pretty tied down analyst that's already tied up with a lot of different uh, IT functions and uh, administrative roles. Uh, then they, uh, you know, of course, get the uh, demands uh, with short time frames or short, uh, short time windows to produce those uh, various types of reports from all the different departments that come, uh, you know, uh, looking to get that information. And, uh, you know, of course, that analyst doesn't have a lot of time as it is and uh, looking for a solution that will help them uh, with, that, uh, with that. So uh, as that, uh, extraction does come in as a, the real world solution to things. You know, the, abil the ability to provide executive scoreboards and dashboards, uh, ability to uh, have scheduled reports that uh, get delivered out through email or into a file share, and uh, being able to meet the needs of all the different uh, departments that are asking for all these different uh, reports uh, with these, or even you know, giving them the access uh, read-only to build those dashboards and reports if they so desire, without tampering with or uh, you know, putting harm into the actual uh, databases that uh, support the back-end products themselves. So uh, you know, being able to have that flexibility. The other problem that you've got uh, with uh, with 
trying to get things in reporting is that the data is often disconnected. Not, you know, none of the products uh, often will talk to each other. They all have their own data sources or their own reporting means, and uh, you know, you get these re requests from you know all the different departments asking for all this data, and often it's a, you know, it's an get the report, extract the data into Excel uh, from each of the different systems, and then you know, uh, joining it together and reproducing it and, and building uh, charts and, and all of that, which all takes time. So the nice thing about extraction is that it will actually bring uh, those systems together through the connectors that they've got built out uh, for a lot of the different third-party products and uh, allow you to build those dashboards where you're presenting all this data on one screen and uh, being able to hit all those data sources at once as well at the same time. Uh, so, you know, bridging that, uh, that gap there. And by providing the connectors, uh, you know, each of these systems, uh, you know, allow the analyst or the others that need to, to be able to have access to that to uh, pull those things all into a singular uh, dashboard or a group of reports uh, that are all real time because the databases that it's accessing are the same databases that the uh, products, those third party products are actually writing to. So the data that you're seeing on the screen is pulling right from the database that the product that's actually doing the writing is, uh, is uh, committing those changes to. So you're getting that real time data uh, turned around uh, on the screen there in the reporting uh, interface. And then, you, of course, you ask why extraction? Uh, specifically when it comes to uh, SCCM and the connector there that we're talking about today. Um, you know, Config Manager reporting has come along a great deal uh, over the years. Uh, it's had a lot of improvements. It's tried to have some, some more user-friendly uh, abilities to it, but you still have the challenge of you know, needing to build those queries, uh, how, to, how to get it to the uh, data to present or to query in so that you can then build the reports. And uh, oftentimes, you know, that's just added time that you just don't have uh, to, to deal with it. So, you know, extraction comes in, presents a connector, the views are already predefined, and uh, you can grab that at that data and uh, bring it, um, you know, bring it to light into, uh, you know, common dashboards and reports uh, without having to worry about doing the queries first or building the structure of, of uh, the complexities of the, some of those reports that, uh, you know, you have to do inside a config manager. So how easy is it to, uh, to build those reports? Uh, the first, uh, you know, there's, there's four solutions or four options that you follow or pass. Uh, the first one, of course, is, you know, I need to select my views. So do I want to look at software? Do I want to look at PC inventory? Uh, you know, what, what am I looking to, to grab? So we've got all the views built into the connector. Uh, into the SCCM database already done for you. You just select your view, uh, and then the next thing you're going to do uh, is uh, you're going to select the data connector. So uh, you've got your, your view and how you want it laid out. You've got the connector of uh, which, um, which particular database uh, or uh, tables you're wanting to hit that are already pre-configured. Uh, the next option is to drag and drop those, uh, those pieces, you know, the pie chart or uh, the uh, record list or the grid or the pivot, bringing all that, just dragging and dropping it onto your canvas that you've done in, in your first step. And then the last uh, piece, of course, is now that you've got that data presented to you on the screen, what if you want to deep dive into uh, that pie chart? What's making up that 30% or, or uh, 15 objects in that slice of the pie? And uh, so I can get that data. And you can interact with, with those charts uh, to present that data with a simple uh, left click and, uh, and view. Or you can pivot those pie charts uh, to affect the other, uh, the other items in the dashboard itself uh, by creating a, a temporary uh, filter for, you know, say, all critical items or everything for Microsoft or everything for a third party. And being able to filter the entire report with a simple left click and, uh, and watch it update uh, right there in front of you. So again, uh, you know, kind of deep diving into uh, creating the, the dashboard. First thing you do is select your view. Uh, if you look, uh, if you remember back to the early days of PowerPoint, and even today, when you uh, go to create a new PowerPoint uh, type of view, uh, first thing it asks you is, you know, how do you want to lay out your screen? So you'll see that we've made that quite simple here, just by letting you select the view that you want to use, and then uh, you know, moving on from there. So uh, you know, how many 
you know, what uh, geometry or uh, do I want things to be horizontal or vertical uh, in the report or am I going to have multiple, uh, you know, objects in there? How do I want that to look is your first step. Second step, of course, is selecting the data connector. Uh, of course, in addition to the product that we're talking about today with Microsoft, uh, Avanti does have uh, connectors for several other third-party vendors, and I'll have a, a list uh, to present here in a few slides. But um, you'll see that we hit a lot of the major players, uh, not just uh, Microsoft or not just uh, Heat or Avanti, but uh, also you know some of the other big ones here. So you'll select your data connector for that particular uh, pie chart that you're looking to uh, to present the data on. And next, uh, you select the, uh, the the item that you're wanting to uh, present. So you can you can drag a pie chart over to uh, the particular section of the view that you're looking to modify and uh, present on, whether it be a pie chart or a bar chart, or maybe it's a, a list view, or maybe you're doing a uh, a pivot uh, table uh, in one of the uh, particular uh, you know squares or, or rectangles of the of the view itself. Just simply drag that from the left to the right and drop it into the report. In addition, we uh, give you the ability to drag over static images. So if you've already got data from somewhere else that you want to drag in, you can drag and drop that in, uh, logos, uh, and all sorts of things that you can uh, bring in in addition to querying uh, you know, data from the system there. So lots of uh, means of being able to customize things. And then, like I said, lastly, being able to kind of fine tune that data. Now that you've got it on the screen, uh, maybe you want to make that an interactive uh, uh, dashboard where uh, you can come in and uh, view the detailed records for different uh, slices of the pie. Uh, maybe you want those reports to schedule out so that they automatically get delivered. Uh, the nice feature there is that you can have them sent out through email. Uh, you can have them deposit out to a uh, file share. Uh, I had a customer that uh, you know had TV screens in a monitoring area, and they wanted static uh, data to present uh, on the screen. So one of the uh, features here is that you can have this scheduled to build out that dashboard that you want to show statically on the screen, have that save out to the file share automatically, and then uh, you know this the screen updates uh, you know that you're displaying that static image uh, with. You know whether it be a third-party, uh, you know, presentation tool or or something like that, where it's just referencing a file and uh, and having it uh, refresh that data. It'll deposit the file, and then your presentation software uh, running those screens can uh, refresh and see that data, you know, on whatever frequency you want uh, done as well. And then uh, the other thing you can do as well is uh, setting up alerts. You know, build those charts out, and then if uh, certain uh, thresholds are met. You know, how do I, uh, you know, get uh, alerted, you know, via email uh, that something is going on in the environment? So being able to take action on the data that you've collected or or presented is uh, important as well. We talked about, uh, you know, the, we work not just with Microsoft or just not just with Avanti or Heat, but you can see here that uh, this uh, is the current list that we've got of uh, third-party connectors and their minimum version levels. Uh, this list grows all the time, um, and uh, one important uh, you know, note on this is that you don't have to wait for a new product release for another connector. Uh, these connectors are made available in your licensing portal, and, uh, and you're able to uh, get in there and, uh, and download the connector. And usually with the connector, you also get some out-of-the-box reports that uh, are pre-configured there that you can uh, either just use right out of the box, or you can actually take and clone them or you know, make them your own and change the data that's being presented without having to go and start with a fresh canvas every time. You've got the ability to, you know, massage and, and work with those, uh, those out-of-the-box reports as well. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, of course, Heat, uh, HP, IBM, uh, Infra, and uh, there's the Avanti products. Most all the Avanti products have the uh, connector now, uh, including some of the former Heat products. <clears throat> We've got uh, Jamf and uh, McAfee and a few others here. And uh, like I said, if you don't see a product here and you you have uh, you know a third-party product that you're working with, uh, provided that we can you know access that database uh, and be able to uh, build some views for you, uh, is, is really uh, the you know the most uh, you know 
the toughest part uh, of, of getting it done, and we can do it with ease. Get that built out for you uh, just by uh, working with, uh, with sales to uh, put that request in and get, our, get the developers working on it. Um, uh, another small note, uh, if you do own uh, other Avanti products, uh, the extraction product is provided to you for free. They provide you with two concurrent analyst uh, connections uh, at a time. Uh, you can have as many users as you want uh, defined in the system. Uh, however, only uh, with the free Avanti version uh, of extraction for all the Avanti connectors uh, that we've got listed here, um, you get uh, two concurrent sessions at one time uh, where they can be in there interacting and building uh, dashboards and reports. Uh, at one time. Of course, you can always increase that by uh, purchasing additional uh, user connections or uh, going up from the standard to the uh, enterprise version, which then uh, you know adds in uh, the ability for some of the third-party connectors and uh, and being able to do a little bit more there. The standard product is just like uh, what you would get if you bought the enterprise version, in that you can build all the schedules, all the uh, you know all the uh, dashboards, everything works just the same. The big limitation with the free version uh, with the Avanti uh, products is that uh, you only have two concurrent sessions at one time, and, uh, and then you know, somebody would have to log off to get back in uh, to you know, free up one of those two. Uh, looking at uh, some of the options for exporting uh, that we'll uh, see, and we're going to kind of dive into this a little bit more uh, in the uh, demo side is the ability to uh, export the dashboards out. You know, you can schedule these or you can do them on demand. You can see here in this case, we've taken a dashboard uh, that's got uh, some customization to it. It's got some notes uh, fields in it and uh, different charts that are all pre-built out. And you can see that we've exported that out and uh, exported it to a Word document that uh, can then be distributed out. So you've got the ability to do that. Um, we also do PDFs and Excel and uh, image files and uh, also HTML as well. So we can export it out to a web uh, page uh, for you so you can just uh, reference that. And then another uh, uh, nice feature that uh, is something that can be a pet peeve and, uh, with a lot of different reporting products is you get these long going um, you know, reports where the headers are all the way on page one and then you're five pages down and you're trying to remember what column went to what. Um, the product does have the ability to do repeating headers on each page for you so that you have that uh, readily available there. And um, you know, can see the, the columns on every page. And then uh, on the, uh, the last thing you've got here is the, um, you know, just uh, some demos of uh, you know, being able to take action on some of these uh, items here. You've got, uh, you know, insights for service managers, project managers, uh, maybe the CIO has, a, you know, access to a, a clipboard, uh, or I mean not a clipboard, a dashboard, and wants to be able to drill down on some of these. They can easily left-click into uh, these total numbers here, or a particular bar or, or pie, uh, and, and actually see the records that make up that, uh, that data, and you can customize how that, uh, that record list looks, what data it presents, so that it's usable for uh, that user. Again, in summary, just uh, that uh, you can uh, have dashboards with multiple data sources um, you know, right, out of the, right on the same screen there. So not only SCCM, but maybe you reference a few other products uh, and, and doing different uh, data connections. Or maybe you're doing uh, PC inventory, software, uh, deployments and doing different queries all on the same dashboard screen. You're not restricted to a, a singular view for that one uh, dashboard. You can actually uh, you know, break it down into each of the different uh, pie charts being a different query, uh, different view. All that's exportable. Um, you have the ability to change charts on the fly. So maybe you bring it over as a pie, and then you want to convert it to a bar chart. Um, you know, you've, you've got the ability to do that with a simple uh, click of the mouse. Uh, another feature that customers like about the uh, product is the ability to have role-based access controls. Who can do what? Uh, who can create? Who can modify public-based reports versus private? Um, who can only you know, work on building their own uh, reporting and not impact others? Uh, all of that is controlled through role-based access. And they do leverage Active Directory for 
uh, those controls. So as easy as defining an Active Directory group, putting those users in there, and then assigning that group to uh, specific permission controls in the product. Uh, you've got uh, you know, the ease of being able to do uh, the access controls there. The data is interactive. Um, like we were talking before, you're able to do real-time filtering down uh, off of that dashboard. Uh, you can drill down into the reports. Uh, and you can even, uh, if, if the product is capable, the third-party product that you're connecting to, uh, if it's capable of accepting, uh, we can actually have it right-click, or I mean not right-click, left-click into a specific record uh, and uh, take you right into the application that it's uh, coming from so that you can take action on items there. And then, of course, you've got uh, you know, real-time and uh, trending uh, analytic uh, abilities there with the product, too. Uh, the product is uh, you know, drag and drop. It's very easy to work with, uh, being able to uh, export and schedule out the custom reports and uh, uh, you know, completely customize the interface of how you want things to uh, present on those reports or those dashboards uh, you know, with ease. From a system requirements perspective, uh, it's a pretty uh, light duty environment. Uh, you can load this up. Uh, it does run on IIS, so it's always recommended that you let this run on its own. Uh, the uh, server can be a virtual machine uh, with a quad core, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, you can use your standard uh, OS uh, drive configuration that you do uh, and, uh, and just leverage that same OS partition if you desire. It works. Uh, all the way down to Windows Server 2008. Uh, however, with the end of life coming up uh, in a few months with that, uh, I did just uh, indicate that, uh, you know, start out with 2012 R2. It does go all the way clear up to Server 2019 uh, as of the latest release. And then from a prerequisite pers uh, perspective, uh, .NET 4.6.1 and IIS 7 or greater. Uh, and then the only time that you would need the Oracle client is if uh, the third-party product that you're uh, connecting to is leveraging an Oracle database. Then, of course, the server would need the Oracle client to be able to uh, connect into those uh, databases uh, and, uh, and report on them. From a SQL perspective, we do use Microsoft SQL on the back end. Uh, we support SQL uh, Server 2012, SD3 or newer. Uh, again, just going ahead and brighten off the 2008 since it's uh, right around the corner for end of life. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, database server itself just needs to be accessible uh, to the uh, extraction application so that it can do the queries uh, for all the different uh, connectors. And uh, for the extraction database itself, it's so small, um, you know, ideally it, it doesn't get too big at all. You can actually just put it into your existing SQL instance on one of your existing environments if you didn't want to have to stand up your own SQL Server uh, instance just for this. You could, you know, uh, put that into, uh, into play there. And that's what I do typically with a lot of my uh, customers that are just looking to, to hook it into an existing SQL instance to save some cost uh, with regard to SQL uh, licensing and things. From a uh, firewall perspective, uh, you're looking at just uh, being able to access port 80 or if you install an SSL cert into the IIS instance, uh, port 443 uh, from the, uh, the person who's going to be accessing the server uh, through their web browser. And then uh, we'll need uh, port uh, 1433 or if you've got a custom port for your SQL, uh, we'll observe that as well uh, from the extraction server out to each of the uh, SQL server databases that we need to hit. Uh, for the connectors. We'll go ahead and uh, pause at this point. I've kind of thrown a lot of data at you before we dive into uh, looking at the demo and, and interacting with the interface just to see if there are any questions. Actually, Rick, you have covered all the questions that have been asked so far, so I, I think we're, we're good to keep going moving forward. Super. So we'll go ahead and dive into the, uh, the demo here. Uh, give me just a moment. And we'll flip over to the screen here. All right. And then, like I said, this is a uh, web-based interface. So, um, you know, you're basically just going right to the, uh, the server uh, via your web browser. 
Uh, it does work uh, compatible with uh, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, uh, Firefox. I've used pretty much all of the web browsers and uh, had uh, you know very little issue uh, with being able to access it. If uh, you know if you've left it up uh, and uh, and it's logged out, then you know you just hit the login button here. It does leverage Active Directory, of course, for your uh, access credentials uh, and uh, configuration. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, hit the login here. If I if this was my first time launching the um, the browser, then it would have asked me for my credentials. <coughs> so as you can see here in the interface, it is uh, you know fairly uh, fairly easy to uh, kind of point and click to access things. Every user that accesses the system uh, has their um, you know their ability to create folders and structures. Uh, these can be done in a shared uh, environment as well, so you can actually define these out uh, down in the shared section, so that um, uh, you know each department has their visibility into the uh, respective uh, folders, and then you can place uh, items in there. And then, uh, like I was saying before, with the connector, uh, you do have the ability uh, to bring in those out-of-box reports in addition to the connector itself. And so, just kind of taking a quick look here. Uh, you can see some of the out-of-box reports that come right with the connector itself uh, give you the ability uh, to see things right off uh, out of the box here and, uh, and being able to know what's going on. So for instance, the, uh, uh, if we look at the collections here, uh, this collections report, I went ahead and changed this to be Microsoft only. And you can see right off the bat, you know, it's giving you a, a, a good high-level view of where things are at. Uh, in my sample environment here, I haven't really done a whole lot of patching for the endpoints kept it uh, pretty vanilla and uh, haven't uh, you know really uh, done much with it so it looks pretty ugly uh, but uh, and then I also took this report uh, and just modified it saved it as a, a copy and then changed it to exclude Microsoft products so now uh, leveraging the Avanti uh, third-party uh, patch for SCCM product I've brought in third-party uh, catalog into my uh, into my uh, SCCM environment and now I'm able to report on, uh, on what's going on uh, with regard to different products. So we can see here that I'm looking at uh, Firefox, I've got Notepad++, 7-Zip, and uh, also uh, Java. And I can see you know, uh, right off the bat what I've got going here. I can look by operating system and see you know, what's, what's looking good or bad by OS. I can look by uh, criticality level or severity. Uh, and then I can also look, you know, uh, by the number of updates there for that. Um, we can also uh, go in and uh, look at information for specific systems. So if I wanted to uh, get in and uh, look at a specific computer, I can build a query uh, that the first thing it does when I access the report is ask me, all right, what computer name do I want to look at? So I can go in here and uh, select a machine and then have it uh, report back the, the machine detail uh, for that particular computer uh, and, uh, and kind of look at things that way. Uh, additionally, I can uh, build uh, reports that show, you know, just lists of hard drive data and you can customize all the data that you want to see here. Uh, you can look at, uh, you know, having charts that show low drive space and maybe have presentation of a, of a, uh, a pie chart for that and, uh, you know, just kind of get uh, quick ideas and queries off of, off of reports. These are all drag and drop and the ability to, to customize them uh, right out of the box here as well. You know, I can look at uh, computers that uh, have uh, Java installed and uh, see the version number uh, that's been collected. Same thing with Silverlight. If I want to target a specific machine, I can do that as well uh, just by going in and selecting a specific machine. And then now I've got a list of all the software and the versioning that came along with that, and uh, being able to, to do that uh, with ease. So, um, you know, if I wanted to uh, to work on a, on this report, maybe I I didn't want to do it by machine. Maybe I wanted to do it by collection. To uh, come in and modify a report, I can come over here on the right and click Edit, and uh, I can go ahead and oh, hold on a second here. <coughs> Just a second here. I hit the wrong thing here and kind of pose myself.
I can come in here and I can change my parameters uh, for this report. Maybe I don't want to uh, use uh, the uh, specific machine. Maybe I want to leverage a, uh, a collection uh, name. So I can come in here and I can change my, uh, my connector. So here's my, all of my different connectors that I've got for different Avani products and then SCCMS here. <coughs> Go ahead and select the software inventory. And let's see. Oh. Grab my collection name. And then maybe I don't want to change, or I don't want it to prompt me for machine name. Maybe I want to have it prompt me for the collection name desired. So I can change that. Come over here. You'll see that now it's prompting me for collection name. You can search and then have it uh, output out the, uh, the data uh, there. I need to change my filter here as well. So this is leveraging the collection name. And then now you can see that based upon the uh, collection that I changed, now I'm getting it uh, all for the collection versus uh, looking at a specific machine. I can then take that same re that report and then save it as a copy. And maybe this is for uh, accounting. They need this. Uh, they want to know by collection. You get the ability to uh, to save it, give it a name, and then now if I go out that I've saved it you'll see that I, not only do I have the one that's down here in the shared folders, but I also have the one now that I've saved a, a version of uh, as the uh, collection. And I did that just uh, within, uh, you know, a few minutes there of uh, making a few adjustments on, on reports there. Um, another uh, uh, handy uh, feature that we've got is the ability to, uh, you know, just create, you know, maybe I want to know about uh, Windows versioning. I'm doing upgrades from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and I want to know, you know, I want to show a, a dashboard uh, with uh, percentages. So I'm going to go in here. I've got my uh, canvas that I've got selected here. I've gone ahead and selected my data source. Uh, I'm not going to use a filter here, but I am going to go ahead and uh, select a pie chart. And I'm going to grab operating system and just drag it over. We'll put it down here in this bottom level. You'll see right off the bat, I've got uh, filtering here that's showing me uh, I've got two machines on Windows 7 and five on Windows 10. And then maybe I want to, uh, another thing that I want to do is I want to report on how I'm doing with regard to Windows 10 and the feature updates and kind of get an idea of how my machines are looking there. You'll see just by default, because I didn't apply a filter at the top level, uh, we also uh, ended up with the Windows 7 version in here. So I need to go in and, and add a filter uh, to that. So I can come in here uh, with ease and just come in and say add condition. And I can do operating system version. And I want to take a look and see how this is uh, looking in there. Uh, I can see that uh, I need to, uh, it looks like those are the versions. Uh, let's, let's try, um, let's do a query where we're just looking at, at Windows 10 machines. So I'm going to select the operating system name, and I'm not quite sure how that appears in the database. And come in here and search, and it'll show me that uh, the Windows 10 stuff all starts with Microsoft Windows 10. So I can actually come over here and change this to starts with. And then add that as a condition. And then now I've taken the Windows 7 machines out of the picture, and I'm simply looking at my Windows 10 uh, build numbers and being able to tell how I'm doing with regard to trying to get everybody onto a, a same uh, page of things. And uh, you can see i got a little work to do there. I've got uh, some machines kind of spread all over. got work to get two machines out of Windows 7 and uh, needing to get them all to the, the current release. And then uh, maybe uh, the last thing that I want to accomplish in this top uh, list up here is uh, simply a list of, uh, of records uh, of those computers. And, you know, maybe I don't really care about the manufacturer and the model and all of that. So uh, I want to go in here and I want to uh, modify that. Just as simple as uh, doing a few clicks, 
I can come in here and uh, take out the uh, fields that I don't want that come uh, in their default. And uh, maybe I want to know um, the, uh, the build number. And, uh, and then the other thing I'd like to know is uh, what was the last time it was boot uh, restarted? Uh, when was the last time I had a hardware scan? And last time I saw it. And then, uh, you know, maybe I want to make sure the version is up there in line with the uh, operating system and uh, kind of move things around. So you can see how quickly you can move things up and down just by grabbing the, the uh, hamburger here off to the right uh, icon and just drag and drop. Uh, and then remove and add fields there. And, uh, and then maybe I want to uh, sort the, uh, the, the list up here by operating system name. So I'm going to drag and drop that into the sorting column and, uh, and then hit OK. And then you'll see that it immediately self-updated it, you know, and, and placed things where they wanted it to see uh, or be. You know, I've got my operating system, the version, uh, boot time, and, and all of that data is right here uh, in front of you. And it was just as simple as doing the drag and drop. And then, uh, you know, lastly, I can come in if I wanted and, uh, and rename the different components. So I've got PC inventory up here. Uh, and then maybe I want this to be, um, you know, named uh, Windows 7 versus And so you can you can come through and do your uh, your naming on this, and uh, that way you know what what it's actually targeting. So you can get the uh, the kind of view of things. You can customize the colors uh, that you're seeing for the uh, the charts to make them a little more uh, you know a little different. Maybe you're not not a friend of the fall. Uh, we're heading into fall, so we got the fall colors here uh, coming into play. Uh, and uh, you know, maybe you want to change those around. You can do that as well. Uh, and then again, you can uh, save this out. Uh, you can save this into your folders, or if you uh, have permissions, you can save into the shared reports so that others can uh, access them, but maybe not edit them, uh, and do all of those uh, those access controls there. And uh, And uh, maybe I want to save this as an executive dashboard, uh, you know, just showing the status of where Windows is at. So you can see, uh, you know, pretty, you know, pretty simply, you can convert things to, uh, you know, to just uh, look the way that you uh, have them, uh, and then you can export uh, pieces of the uh, report, or uh, if you want to uh, schedule it out, uh, you can do that here. Again, we were talking about all the different formats that you've got uh, as options. Uh, you can schedule these to occur on uh, whatever frequency that you'd like to have done. Uh, you can target certain days of the month, uh, <coughs> certain months of the year, uh, have it on a timer that every, every so often it refreshes. And then, of course, for the delivery, you've got the ability to write it out to a file share uh, or you know, send it out via email. And you can even, uh, you know, to help the end user or the recipient out, maybe you uh, pin the date. Uh, to the end of the file name, and uh, that way they, you know, if they're saving these off somewhere, they don't have to do that. Uh, and you, you save them some time to be able to uh, get that done. So it's, uh, you know, fairly uh, robust and uh, simple system to work with, and uh, being able to, uh, you know, get what you need with ease, and uh, being able to, to target things. Uh, if you wanted to, um, uh, you know, we talked earlier about being able to take action on the reports. So we can actually, uh, you know, change this to Windows 10, and uh, and you'll notice that all the sections all change to Windows 10 when I did that. I can do the same thing here. Now I'm looking at Windows 7 data, and then when I'm ready to uh, get it to go back to uh, the report default, uh, I can either just close out of the report because this is an uh, it's not an edit mode. It's it's just uh, you know action. Uh, status from the end user perspective, uh, you can actually uh, you know modify those and get those there, and um, and then you can also uh, change this to uh, different uh, views. You know maybe you didn't like the pie in the end, 
I didn't have to go and drag and drop or edit the report. I was able to change that right on the fly. And, um, and of course, this is uh, only while you're in that view. If you wanted to make the permanent change, you would just come up and edit the report. So that's uh, kind of uh, you know just uh, doing a, a quick uh, dive into the uh, into the report itself and and the interface, uh, being able to uh, see how things uh, are uh, uh, you know are, are able to just uh, with ease drag and drop and change things uh, on the fly. Uh, we did a few different types of queries on one dashboard and uh, made that uh, happen for you. We showed you how to use uh, variables, how to change the variable to look at a different field and then uh, generate that data based upon that change. And uh, it was all done you know, within a matter of a few minutes. So I'll open up to uh, any questions you might have on the product uh, and what you've seen here today and go from there. Thank you, Rick. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you very much. Our first question is, how fresh is the data used in the extraction reports? The data is uh, real time in that uh, we're actually, when we set this up, it will actually uh, have a read only account into the database for that third party product or that Avanti product. So as soon as you bring it up on the screen, it's reading it right from the database. It's not a archive copy or a, you know, an rsync copy of, uh, of, or duplicated copy. It's, it's actually reading right from the data source that the, uh, the product is writing to. Great. Here's a really good one. What makes extraction reporting for SCCM more consistent than SCCM standard reporting? I think the uh, ability to um, to just you know be able to hit that database directly and to pull that data. You're not having to go in and refresh things. You saw that as soon as I uh, you know made a change uh, to one uh, piece of the pie and applied that to the report. You know, right there on the screen, it, it refreshed all of the different uh, panes in that view and did it right there on the fly. You know, with uh, you know dealing with inside of extract or inside of SCCM, you know, you're having to tinker with the queries and then save those queries and then you know refresh the report. Uh, where this is, you know, doing it real time right there on the screen for you. Okay, great, thank you. And here's another another really good one. I need reporting on patch status. You know, failed updates, machines patched, machines unpatched. Is this possible? Yes, it is. Because we're reading right out of the database, we're pulling right off of what the endpoints have reported in. So if they've, uh, you know, if they've had issues with uh, getting a specific patch out, uh, or if there's been, uh, you know, a, a reported instance, we're going to be able to tell you exactly what the endpoint has given us and written into the database uh, when it reported back. So we're able to give those. You can generate uh, charts just like we did with the uh, OS upgrade progression example that I gave you. Uh, you can build pie charts and uh, bar charts and you know lists and, and everything like that uh, to uh, be able to pull that right out of there. Okay, great. And qu another question flowing in. Uh, can you report on calculated values? Show me all the machines where updates are deployed required and not superseded and mark those as compliant in any way they are as non-compliant? You can do some calculating uh, in here. Uh, it's, again, it's just uh, getting the variables configured in there uh, like we did for, you know, doing pivots on the, on the table. So, yeah, you can uh, take and, and do some calculating there in the back end. And it will just read that data and then uh, make the adjustments and present it for you. It won't take action. Uh, because it is read only into the database, you're not going to take any action on anything. Uh, it's, it's again just read only uh, data reads. Uh, however, you know if you're able to, uh, you can actually you know click the thing and, and it will link you back uh, to that specific record potentially. And then being back in the product, you'd be able to uh, take whatever action you need. But uh, all of the data presented uh, can be calculated and presented, but not uh, modified. We won't write to the database. Okay, great. Thank you, Rick. And one last question. Can, extra can an extraction dashboard be displayed for real-time insight in an office? So I guess they might have a live monitor or live TV. Um, can the, can the uh, dashboard be displayed in real-time in that kind of uh, instance? It can uh, semi-real-time because the fact that uh, you can set that export out uh, that I was showing you in the scheduling 
Uh, you can set that on a timer so that it, every so uh, so often it, it writes that file out and then have your uh, whatever you're using to present uh, actually show you that static file um, you know, right there on the display. So, of course, when it refreshes, uh, that data will change on the screen there as well. Okay. We actually have one more question come through, and this is a good one. Uh, what is different between extraction and Power BI? That is a good question. I have not done much with Power BI myself. Um, I know that uh, it's uh, been uh, popular on the, on the latest revisions of SCCM. Um, you know, beyond the fact that, you know, you saw how easy it was to, uh, you know, we've already got the queries built for you. All you have to do is just drag and drop and then set your uh, filtering uh, accordingly. Uh, I think it's, that's, that's more of your, your ease of use. Uh, but uh, I haven't actually dove into the, the BI uh, side of things uh, as of yet. That sounds like that might be a potential future webinar. So, well, thank you very much, Rick. That, that was amazing. And thank you, everybody, for your questions. Um, if anybody has to reach out with uh, any additional questions or concerns, you know, we're all available. Otherwise, uh, we thank everybody for attending today. And, and Rick, thank you once again for the a great presentation. And uh, we're going to close out this webinar now and thank everyone for attending and everybody have a great day.